This is a system design interview question, which is to design a URL shortener tool like tinyurl or bit.ly from the ground up. Here are the areas we are going to cover. We'll start by outlining the design requirements and we'll go through some clarifying questions for the interviewer to better understand the scope and constraints of this system. Next, we'll sketch a high-level architecture of our URL shortener with the key components and how they interact with each other. We'll dive into specifics of each component of the system, including the API design, the URL shortener service, and the database. We will implement strategies to scale the system horizontally and ensure that it remains highly available and maintains low latency as it grows. And finally, we'll cover how to handle the growth of the system over time, including database replication and sharding strategies. We'll also touch on the security considerations of this service. Let's start with the functional and non-functional requirements of this system. We have two functional requirements for this system. First one is when we are given a long URL, we have to create a short URL from it. And then when we are given the short URL, we have to redirect the user to the long URL. And the non-functional requirements are that we need to have very low latency and very high availability of this system. Some clarifying questions that we might ask to the interviewer. First one is how many URLs will be created per second? And let's say the answer for this is 1000 URLs per second. This means that we'll be getting 1000 writes to our database per second. And every year we will have 31.5 billion URLs created in our system. And if we assume that we'll typically have 10 times more reads than writes, that means that we'll be getting 315 billion reads every year. Now another question can be what characters can we use and the typical answer for this is alphanumeric which means that we can use the letters from A to Z uppercase and lowercase and also the digits from 0 to 9 and in total this is 62 characters that we can use to create a shortened URL. And one last question can be what would happen if multiple users have the exact same URL and they are trying to map it to a short URL. Should we map both of these URLs to the same short URL or should we create one for each person? And for this one, let's assume that the answer is to always create a new short URL for each user because we might have the same URL shortened by two different users and we want to give them each their unique shortened URL. Now with this information, we can proceed to data estimation. With the answers that we have, we need to calculate how long the URL should be after shortening. Of course, we are trying to make it as short as possible, but we need to keep in mind the number of created URLs each year and make sure that we are not running out of the URLs. First, let's estimate the number of unique URLs needed for a significant period, and the common approach is to plan for at least a few years in operation. For simplicity, let's calculate for 10 years. We can easily calculate seconds in a year, which is 31.5 million, and total seconds in 10 years will be 315 million. This means that in 10 years we'll create 1000 times 315 million, and that is 315 billion unique URLs. And with this information, we can calculate the length of a URL identifier. And given that the character set is 62, the length of the URL identifier can be calculated as follows. If you use one character, that is 62 unique URLs created. If you use two characters, that is 62 powered by 2, which is around 4000 unique URLs. So 62 powered by 6 is 56 billion unique URLs, which is still lower than 315 billion. So we need to go step further, and that is 62 powered by 7, which is 3.5 trillion unique URLs. And this means that we at least need to use 7 characters for our URL identifier. Based on this, let's also do the data math and see how much data we'll be storing. For each URL, we are going to store the unique identifier from the shortened URL. And obviously, we don't need to use the prefix of it. We only need to store the 7 characters, which is 7 bytes. We also need to store the long URL, which let's say you can be up to 100 characters, meaning 100 bytes. And also some additional user metadata, which let's say can be 500 bytes per URL. And in total, we can round it up to 1000 bytes maximum per URL. And this means that we'll store 1000 times 315 billion, which is 315 terabytes of data. With this information, we can proceed to high-level design of this system. The system architecture can be broken down into these key components. We will have users who send their long URLs to be shortened, or who send us a short URL, and we need to redirect them to the long URL. All of these requests go through a load balancer to distribute the traffic across multiple web server instances to ensure high availability and to balance the load. 
These server replicas are responsible for handling the incoming HTTP requests and store the data in database or retrieve the URLs that are shortened. We also need a URL shortener service that contains the logic for generating short URLs, storing URL mappings and retrieving the original URLs for redirection. Now before moving any further, let's first think about the API design of our single web server. First, we need to define the basic API operations for our service. We'll go with a simple REST API and we need to have two endpoints as stated in our functional requirements. The first one is for creating a short URL and that is post to API slash URLs. The input for this endpoint should be the JSON payload with the long URL inside of it. And the output of this endpoint will be JSON response with 201 status code and the newly created short URL inside of the body. This is the case where the URL was successfully created. If the request was invalid, we will return 400 bad requests, meaning the input URL is malformed. And if the requested URL already exists in the system, we will return 409 conflict. This is optional and depends on whether you allow duplicate entries for the same long URL or not. And the second endpoint that we will have is get to API slash URLs slash the short URL ID. The input for this endpoint is the short URL ID path parameter and the output of this should be HTTP redirect to the long URL and we will use 301 status code here. This is the appropriate status code to use in a URL shortener service. It indicates that the redirection is permanent and this tells the browser to cache this information that this short URL has been moved to this long URL. So next time if user types the short URL, the browser will automatically redirect them to the long URL without even reaching to our servers. But one catch here is that if you want to track the analytics of each request and you want it to grow through your system every time, then you need to use the 302 status code instead of 301. And we will have 404 outputs if the specified short URL ID does not exist in our system. And if the URL has been deleted or expired, we will return 410 status code. Next, let's talk about the database and storing the shortened URLs in our system. This layer stores the mapping between the short and long URLs and it should be optimized for fast read and write operations. The schema can be very simple, a primary key for the short URL ID and fields for the long URL and possibly some metadata like user ID and so on. And here we mostly need to think about the reads we will get to the system. If we typically get 1000 writes per second, then we can assume that we will get at least 10 to 100,000 reads per second. In this case, we need to use a high performance database that supports fast reads and writes. And that means that we need to go with some sort of NoSQL database. For example, a document store like MongoDB or white column store like Cassandra or a key value store like DynamoDB since they are specifically designed to be able to handle a large amount of scale. It won't be ACID compliant, but we're not concerned about it because we're not going to do bunch of joins or complex queries and we don't need those ACID rules and atomic transactions here. One of the core parts of this system is the URL shortener service and the main task for the URL shortener service is to generate short URLs without introducing collisions or different long URLs pointing to the same short URL. We can for example use hashing here to generate a hash of a long URL and use part of it as the identifier. However, hashing can lead to collisions. The other option is to auto-increment IDs, which is to use a database auto-increment ID and encode it to a short string. This will ensure the uniqueness, but it might be predictable. And the other option is to come up with a custom algorithm to generate a unique IDs with a mix of characters to ensure uniqueness and non-predictability. For example, there is a very simple way to avoid collisions. We can just generate all possible keys with 7 characters and store them in a database as keys, where each key is the generated URL and the value is boolean. If it's true, then this URL is already used, and if it's false, then we can use this URL to create a new map. So every time a user makes a request to generate a key, we can just find a URL from this database that is not currently in use and map it to the long URL that's in the request body. Now do you think we will use SQL or NoSQL database here? 
Think of a scenario where two users ask to shorten their long URLs and they both got mapped to the same key from this database. In this case the URL will be mapped to one of their requests and the other one will be broken. We can easily fix this by using SQL database because it comes with ACID properties and we can create a transaction for each session here to make these steps in isolation and we won't have to worry about such scenarios and issues in this case. So let's go with this approach and have another keys database which is let's say Postgres database or MySQL database that stores the keys and boolean values in front of them. Now this system obviously won't be able to handle the traffic of 1000 URLs per second and to make this more scalable first we need to introduce a caching layer. We'll use a caching layer to cache popular URLs for quick access somewhere in an in-memory cache with tools like Redis and given that some URLs might be accessed much more frequently than others we need an eviction policy that prioritizes frequently accessed items. So the two suitable caching eviction policies for this scenario are the LRU and TTL cache. With the LRU cache we remove the least recently accessed items first. This policy is effective for a URL shortener because it ensures that the cache keeps the most recently and frequently accessed URLs available which can significantly reduce the access times for popular links. And the TTL stands for time to leave cache which assigns a fixed time to leave to each cache entry and once the entry's TTL expires it removes it from the cache. And TTL can also help in automatically refreshing the cache contents and can be combined with other policies like LRU for more effective cache management. Now to ensure that our database also supports high availability and fault tolerance, we need to implement replication and sharding strategies here. Considering that we have 3.5 trillion unique URLs with our 7 character set, we can use key-based sharding to distribute the URL records across multiple shards evenly. Let's say we distribute these to 3 shards and each shard will approximately have 1 trillion URLs. This will ensure scalability as the number of URLs grows in our system. And we can also implement master-slave replications within each shard to ensure high availability and fault tolerance. And this setup allows for quick failover and recovery in case of node failures. So for each shard we will have one master database and 3 slave databases. Since we'll be getting a lot more reads than writes, we can use slave databases that are only for reads and one shard database that is the master and we can read and write to this database. And this approach is pretty scalable because we can always introduce more shards or more slave databases. And finally some security considerations for our service is to have first input validation. We need to validate URLs to avoid storing malicious links. Before storing a new URL in the database, the server will perform checks to ensure that it's well formed and it can sanitize the input to prevent SQL injection or other forms of attacks. We can implement rate limiting to prevent DDoS attacks and abuse by limiting the number of requests from a single source. For example, we can implement a token bucket algorithms and allow each IP address a certain number of requests per time. Obviously we will use HTTPS and ensure all communications are encrypted using HTTPS to protect user data. And we can set up some monitoring and logging system to detect performance bottlenecks and to ensure the system health with tools like Elasticsearch, Logstash or Kibana. Thanks for watching. For important updates and weekly insights, subscribe to my newsletter and follow me for more content like this. See you next time.